Hi, my name is Tony. And I'm We are from Summit Antarctica. You are live in Blue Ball. This is Live in Limbo. I am Andreas Babilakis, and with me I have members of Sonata Arctica. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks for us. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm with you guys, so everything's great. Uh, can I get your names? Um, Tony. And your Singer. vocals? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Basi, bass guitar. Perfect. And you're the new addition to the band, I believe. The new guy, uh, one year. <laughs> Welcome to the band, I guess. Uh, how's, how's it been so far this year? It's been really great. Everything's been good? I've seen uh, lots of new places around the world and playing new shows and it has been really amazing. Perfect. Which has been your highlight so far out of those places? Uh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also have the new album which came out earlier this year, Pariah's Child, and how has that gone for you guys, your eighth album? Uh, really good. Um, we had fun touring with it, you know, because the, uh, the album it's more generally speaking metal than what on the Stones for our name, the previous album. Right. It was like our rock album, if you will. <laughs> and it's kind of slowed down the whole live set. They were really live friendly songs to play live, but, but uh, you know, it started to get boring in the long run, having too many of those songs on the set list. But uh, now, uh, these new additions, they are really welcome to change the pace and, and they somehow blend much better into this Sonata Arctica form. No, absolutely. So um, you're saying now that the live shows are a lot, like, better to what you were w hoping to achieve with your with your concerts, or? Um, well, it's a, this is more of Sonata Arctica, I, I think, what people expect from us. Because on, on the Stone Squatter name tour, I think we played quite a bit too much, you know, those uh, Stone Squatter name songs, which were slower rock, you know, slow or mid tempo, and then. Not, none of those really speedy songs. I think I Have a Right was pretty much the fastest song we had. Right. <laughs> which, is, which is not much. So uh, so now we're back on the speedy stuff. And also, you know, celebrating at the same time the 15th anniversary of Sonata Arctica. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, re-releasing also uh, Ecliptica, the debut album. Right. Re-recorded that whole album and mixed it and everything. So it, it's going to be a special release as well. And uh, because of that, we are also playing some of the songs we have haven't played in a long, long time from that album live as well, so it's a nice blend. That's perfect. So you've got basically almost your best of, if you will, That's and your shows of, yeah. now. Although at the moment it seems like we are totally neglecting one album, Winterheart Skill. We have no song from that album. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'm not at all, but I think uh, we are rehearsing and uh, you know, practicing new songs all the time. Right. Whenever we get a chance on the soundtrack and everything, so, so I, I think we're going to get something from there as well. Perfect. Um, having said that, you've your band's been in the metal scene for a very long time, 15 years, of course, and you've seen its highs, you've seen its mid-ranges, when metal's become like a big kind of statement in pop culture, when it's kind of like subtle, become more subtle. Um, how do you think metal is now, actually, with um, the newer bands that have come out, the bands that are still playing after all these years? How do you think the metal community is now? Well, um, I think, especially in Finland, you can see that metal used to be the mainstream thing for way more than 10 years and, and now it's it's slowly turning into another direction you know we have like this uh, rap act but, it's, but now it, it's it's you know the wheel is turning all the time and it, i'm sure it takes some time you know for that to turn back into metal again and i think that's the worldwide trend as well at the moment so uh, you know but metal music never goes anywhere it has only become a little bit more underground thing you know, right a, but maybe i think it's, it's a good thing because it, it lost a lot of its um it's a rebellion thing you know right it became too pop <laughs> some of it thing. yeah some of it some of it yeah so I, I think it needs to kind of brew a little bit and then come back as, as a new you know a new generation of, of metal musicians as well right but also you know it's it's fun we and other old metal apps can stay together long enough to see that new high one day. Exactly. But because, uh, you know, the metal fans are really great and they keep this scene alive. And uh, I'm really thankful for that, of course, you know. Absolutely. They are older brands than we are, like Halloween, Stradivarius, and they're still around. They're still going. And they're going strong and they never went anywhere. They've seen the highs and lows before. Yeah. It's just another phase and, you know, there'll be a new wave coming shortly.
actually, in, in, it's funny that you mentioned this wheel because it seems like I don't I know on your side of the world it seems like as you said it's on its way down before it comes back up, and the states over here or North America rather, it seems like that wheel starting to come up a little bit because you have a lot of bands that do combine genres. That's kind of how they are finding the way back up. Like you know, like the big wave of like black metal that's combining itself with other genres like Nocmistium or Death Heaven, Wolves of the Throne Room. Um, so having said that, do you think that that kind of resurgence will find its way over to your side as well? Like, what's that kind of scene like over in Europe? Mm, I think Europe is going more towards this mm, disco thing and, and that kind of rap, <laughs> rap stuff at the moment. Right. I see it that way, really. And uh, I think well, the US has been for a long time more into this extreme metal than what we have in Europe. Right. Sure it's been big there as well, but, but it, here, especially when we've been touring, it's been really difficult for us to find other bands to open for us that are like in, even closely in the same genre. <laughs> we mostly get like... They're not really symphonic. Bands, yeah. Like most of the local bands that come and open for you, they are extreme metal and then and, and, and say if you take a local like North American band as a, as a tour support, they mostly and, and usually are something something way more extreme than we are. Right. It's been sometimes really odd to go on stage, you know, after <laughs> something really uh, extreme, and then, and then we come and, and introduce the softer side of metal in a way. You know, we have a lot of ballads and stuff like that. But yeah. You know, it's it's um, Europe is a little different, I think. Usually. You don't think there's going to be like that kind of fight to have to like combine genres to keep up at the head of the pack in Europe at all, right? Yeah, well, uh, I really can't say I'm smart enough. I don't follow the scene that much, you know, but, but hopefully, you know, because it's combining and, and finding new ways to make music. It, it's um, really important, you know, of course. But uh, I think it, it's getting more and more complicated for labels to market these bands because every band seems to have a new new, and new genre and their own genre. So, uh, and then it, for us, even it's impossible because we are not purely power metal. Right. And we have so many other things happening, but still they uh, market us as a power metal band. Right. And uh, then a lot of people who are really into power metal, they think that, okay, some of other things, they are power metal, and why do they even call that? Not right. Metal. And then again, labels claim that people can't find us if we are not called power metal. And then, so it's. it's it's really difficult, and I used to fight it for many, many years, and then say that we are something totally different, and uh, but I just gave up, you know, let them do their stuff, and you know, I just make music <laughs> I like myself. Right, so you don't let the actual labeling thing get you, because I know like a lot of artists will say, no, we have nothing to do with this genre, but... No, it's, it's, uh, it's useless, it's, it's bullshit, basically. You know? It's basically for it's this, like, to like... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a marketing tool, not yeah. more, and uh, of course it's valuable because of that, but, but still... It's uh, it's somehow often really misleading as well, you know. If there are people who really don't do not understand what they are selling, they should maybe even try that. Maybe talk with the band what they really want to be. Yeah. Because especially for the young band, if, if they are into jazz, for example, and then they are marketed as a blues band, or like avant garde or something. Yeah, they <laughs> they yeah they will eventually you know are they are forced like this square block in a round hole type of situation where yeah. you really don't fit and you really are not purely what they tell you that you are. Right, so you end up with like muddy waters instead of somewhere else, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. and yeah. How are you going to find the right fans? But I don't think you guys have anything to worry about because again, it's 15 years, you guys are still growing really strong, your eighth album, of course, and I've seen a lot of people outside with your band's logo like yeah. cloud right all, all over them so it's i think you guys are doing very well yeah we, we are hanging on you know just being tough <laughs> just doing it and then of course now getting fuzzy in the band gives a lot of new blood and energy for the whole band and the touring is, is way more fun now i have someone to go on a long walks <laughs> you know like today we just walked from here to cn tower and black back and like that's that's 10 kilometers which is which is a nice walk anyway so almost and uh, that kind of stuff. It's really important for me. Some of those other guys, they're just, you know, sitting at the venue and, and in the bus and watching movies, and I can't right. take that anymore. I'm 
too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because 15 years of sitting, because a lot of people think it's a luxury just touring and stuff. It, it really isn't. The only luxury is like the hour when you're on the stage, right? Yeah, but if you consider it luxury, you know, to miss your family for seven weeks. Uh, even it's, that. It's and everything. So, yeah, that's probably a luxury for some, but uh, I don't see it that way, you know, sleeping in a confined gas chamber of a bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The oven, basically. Yeah, and then, then eating whatever, wherever, and then, and, and, you know, screaming your lungs out every night on stage. Yeah. Which is the fun part of the whole thing, of course, the shows and being in front of the people. That's what you're there to do. But the, all the rest time, the downtime, which is like 22 hours of the day. Right. That's that's getting to you, you know, on a long tour. Right? Absolutely. Uh, I believe we have to wrap things up. But before we go, um, you went on this nice long walk to the CN Tower. What was the nicest thing that both of you saw while you went on your trek? Well, um, <laughs> the CN Tower. Was it the actual CN Tower? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Some video and taking photos and stuff like that. I've been there up there as well. Oh, yeah? Previous tours. I've seen. This is my first, first time in Canada. So. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, well, the walk itself, it was nice seeing all the neighborhoods, you know, Chinatown and really down here. And Absolutely. And then the downtown area. So, yeah, it's just the walk itself. Yeah, it's the reward of the whole thing. Absolutely. And luckily you had a chance to be able to do that. And I thank you very much for this opportunity. It was nice to meet you.